in general, to eliminate the parameter, we solve for the parameter in both equations and then set the equations equal to each other. Let's look at this example, because examples are the easiest way to show us. We're going to sketch the graph described by the parametric equations x equals 1 over the square root of t minus 1 plus 1 and y equals 1 over t minus 1 by eliminating the parameter. So first we have x equals 1 over the square root of t minus 1 plus 1 at the end and y equals 1 over t minus 1. First step, solve for the parameter, in this case t. So for our first equation, we're going to see that we have x minus 1 equals 1 over the square root of t minus 1. Square root of t minus 1 equals 1 over x minus 1. t minus 1 equals 1 over x minus 1 squared. So t equals 1 over x minus 1 squared plus 1. There's our x equation. All right, now let's look for the y. We go back up here. We get y equals 1 over t minus 1. So t minus 1 equals 1 over y. t equals 1 over y plus 1. Now let's set these equal to one another. Please note, while solving for t in both of them is one solution, you could have also done what we did earlier, where you solve for t in one equation and then substitute that in for the t in the other equation. Both are valid ways to approach this problem. I'm just showing you another way. So we're going to set the two equations equal to one another. I realize that I can subtract y from both or one from both sides, which gives me one over x minus one squared equals one over y. And I actually can take the reciprocals of both sides. So if I multiply both sides by y. I get y times 1 over x minus 1 squared equals 1. And then I can multiply both sides by x minus 1 over 1 squared, which gives me y equals x minus 1 squared. And there is my final solution. What this then gives me graphically is going to be a parabola. So in this case, I'm going to get a parabola. Let's look at our graph that has a vertex at 1, 0 and is going up. There we go. Now I know this doesn't look quite like the parabola you were expecting. You expected this hole to be filled in and to open on the other side as well. But I want you to look above at our original equation. We see that we have a radical sign with t minus 1. And we also have a denominator with t minus 1. Which means that t must be greater than 1. If t is greater than 1, then that means that y has to be greater than 0, which is why our graph gets restricted. We also see that if t is greater than 1, then x is greater than 1 as well. And this is how we end up with this graph. What I'm most concerned about is that you be able to come up with this equation.